Hello, my name is Kevin Smith, I'm, and I'm a Keysight Application Engineer for Scopes. In this video, I'm going to show you some basic tips for optimizing a jitter measurement. Um, so let's start with some basics, uh, sample rate and sine x over x acquisition. Generally speaking, we want to maintain the highest possible sample rate that the scope will allow, which on this given scope is 40 giga samples. Other scopes have uh, 80 or 160 giga samples, or maybe 20 giga samples. Um, by default, this will be controlled um, automatically by the time scale. So if I go to a longer and longer and longer time scale, at some point it's going to drop. Okay. So very generally speaking, what we want to do is we can get we can click on the sample rate and it'll bring up the acquisition menu, or we can get there from setup to acquisition. Okay, and we want to lock that to manual. Okay, and you can also lock the number of points to manual. And on that note, we can also have it display the number of points we've gotten, we've acquired per trigger, or if we right click, we can display the time span. Displaying the time span is also can also be of benefit because um, on all scopes, the sample clock jitter can increase. Um, at longer time scales. The general rule of thumb is no more than uh, 10 microseconds for the best possible um, uh, sample clock jitter on a given scope. Okay, And going back to that menu, we also want to leave sine x over x on. Um, even at 40 giga samples on, a, say, even a relatively slow signal, um, sine x over x can vastly increase the resolution, and I generally like to set it to, um, force it to 16 points like that. Okay. Um, the next thing we want to do is we want to do an auto scale, okay, and so there's a couple of different ways to do that. You can do it from the front panel or from the GUI. Uh, you can do from here or control and A should do it. And we can see it's auto scaled. Now at this point, you know, we really want to have it take up about 7.2 divisions. So you can either push in the front channel vertical knob or you can punch in a value here. I found that it uh, it's about 59 millivolts, or if you right-click on it and do, you can select Fine, and you'll see it's got a vague blue highlight around it, and now it'll go in much smaller increments. So we want to set that to about 59 for this particular signal. And the point here is that we are optimizing the signal-to-noise ratio, okay? Um, so if I hit Single now, we can see that maybe it's uh, it's pretty good, okay? Um, so next up is um, uh, further optimizing the signal-to-noise ratio. And what we're going to do is we're going to reduce the bandwidth um, slowly while observing a rise time measurement. Um, there's a couple of things you might want to do for this. Okay. Um, so one thing I'm, I am going to do is I'm going to um, I'm going to go back to memory depth, but that's I'm going to turn on a um, second. I'm going to turn on FFT first. So we can do that math, simply the spectral. And here we have a FFT. We don't have a lot of time capture, so the FFT resolution isn't all that great, but that's okay for right now. And then I'm also going to turn on another math function, um, the gating math function, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to capture a lot of time. And I'm also, I also want to look in at just one, say, one pulse, so to speak, out of this uh, signal. There it is, gating on channel one. I'm going to go to um, two nanoseconds. Total four nanosecond window. Whoops. Two nano. There we go. Okay. And that should be okay. And... What I did by accident is I turned off FFT, so I want to use function 2 for my gate. Two negative nanoseconds, two nanoseconds, great, and turn it on. And really I want to put this in a second window, so I can right click in the grid, number of grids, two. This way I don't get everything all scrunched up. I can just drag this green waveform down. And the green box shows me what I'm gating, okay? 
Um, so that's, that's great. So now I'm going to go out to a much longer time scale. Let's hit single, and so I can get good resolution on my FFT. That's pretty reasonable. Maybe a little bit more. Hit single again. That's good. And we can see that I'm still capturing this one pulse. Um, I'm going to shrink this up just a little bit. Um, and the other thing I really kind of want to do is I want to uh, make sure I always get kind of the same display. So this is a PRBS 7 minus 1 signal. Um, so that's pretty easy to trigger on with a uh, pulse greater than, um, say, 6 nanoseconds. And I like to do negative. Put it into triggered mode and hit single. I need to maybe adjust this threshold up a little bit. There we go. And now if I hit run, it'll just continue to trigger repeatedly on this, on just um, uh, sing, basically a single valued waveform. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on a rise time measurement on this guy and on this guy as well, on the gate signal, same signal, just, just looking at one pulse. And what I want to do, I also want to do um, measure, set up, and measure all data. So this is going to basically going to measure multiple rise times for, for a single trigger event, but on the gated waveform, I will only get one per each, okay? Because uh, I only have one uh, rise time in my gated signal, okay? Um, I'm going to stop the scope. And I'll also note that we can uh, right-click and do measure all data. Okay, so now at this point, um, I'm going to visually be looking at this signal and the FFT. We can probably make this a little bit smaller there, okay, and um, the minimum rise time value. So let's do a clear display, okay, and let's hit single, okay. So I see that my minimum rise time um, is about 235 picoseconds. I'm visually going to inspect uh, this guy here, he's not the fat. This signal's not the fastest, but um, we could move the gate window around to find that fastest. There's ways to do that. Um, so I can either to get to my bandwidth control, I can either go to um, the setup to acquisition menu, or I can click here. And what I want to do is I want to go to manual, and I'm going to start decreasing the bandwidth. And visually looking at this guy at the gated signal and this minimum number, and because it'll this will post process it, uh, DSP the bandwidth, and so we're at um, 236. And I want to find a number, um, a setting where the rise time really isn't changing significantly, and this um, is effectively removing noise from the system. Okay, so I'm all around 235 or so. Um, and if I go to 3 gig, even, um, once I get to 2.5 gig, it drops, uh, starts increasing significantly. This is a 1 gigabit signal with a slew rate control. And um, I'm feeling that about 4 gigahertz is probably the right number to pick here. And so less bandwidth means less noise. Um, and so ultimately, uh, I've improved my signal-to-noise ratio. Okay, so um, at this point, I can turn off my gate signal, and I can turn off my FFT. Um, yeah. Turn off my FFT. And then really I can do uh, set up to display, and uh, set up display, and then turn off, uh, go to one grid on the first guy. Yeah, number one, one window, okay? Um, and I don't care about this measurement anymore, so let's do a delete measurement. Now I'm going to want to do some jitter analysis. I basically have two choices, two types of jitter, um, measurement suites to use, EasyJIT or EasyJIT Plus, EasyJIT Complete. Um, other videos explore these in detail. But once I've got my rise time measured, uh, I've got it basically set up, I'm mostly good. Um, so I might, for example, we can follow the wizard, 
But what I want to do is I'm going to do a data TIE measurement, um, TIE being the, the most, most fundamental jitter measurement. And here I have a threshold selection, okay? Um, for most of the jitter measurements, they will apply to general. And the, the, the headache with the standard thresholds um, is maybe in the top and base definition. And these will be recalculated on every single acquisition. There's a lot of choices here in the help menu we just click there, goes through all the different choices. But um, a lot of times, I like to use uh, um, custom levels where I can set absolute values or um, custom level plus a, plus a threshold. Um, very general comment is that you want to set the threshold where your receiver is going to make that measurement. So if it's zero volts, use zero volts. If it's 200 millivolts, use 200 millivolts, okay? Um, and the hysteresis control can be used to account for strange-shaped waveforms with ISI. These comments also can apply to all those rise time measurements I made. Um, and so this is the setup for EasyJIT. It's very similar for EasyJIT Plus. So if I go Analyze EasyJIT Plus, you'll have the option in the wizard to do this, or the threshold button is right here. And again, I get the same kind of controls. If we go through the wizard, though, I'm going to skip through most of it quickly. All right, so it'll set it. We have a set to 50% button and a snap to zero button, and again, hysteresis. Um, so the EasyJIT Plus always uses. Um, uh, uh, a threshold with hysteresis and the snap to zero button. If it's within, I think, 10 millivolts, the help tells us more, um, and it finds that it's like 5.9 from the 50% button, um, it will um, automatically set it to zero as long as this is checked. So check your thresholds, make sure they make sense, optimize the bandwidth. Uh, and the vertical scaling for signal to noise, and keep that sample rate high, keep that time scale for a single trigger below um, t 10 microseconds or less, and you're 99.9% um, .9 of the way there to having the cleanest possible jitter, jitter measurement. Thank you for your attention.